uh, what I'm going to deliberate is I would focus on capacity building uh, for enhancing research uh, in the universities and uh, we would all appreciate that uh, we moved from agricultural economy to industrial economy to talking about soft power of uh, IT to now the knowledge economy. And we as a nation will have to position ourselves in critical role being played as generation of knowledge uh, for recognizing India as playing important role in that context. We also recognize that uh, the 21st centuries needs to be research-driven universities because uh, conventionally universities are looked up as disseminating knowledge, but uh, the role that probably would universities will have to play in 21st century as research-driven universities. Uh, national education policy also has very clearly articulated the role that universities are expected to play in driving the agenda in the research context also. And as researchers, obviously, uh, we play an important role, not only in research publications and grants, but actually a thinking in the field that uh, contributing and shaping to the policies, and that's the important role that we all as researchers play. And uh, as mentioned by uh, Professor Kanitka also, that uh, it's not the watertight compartments of academics and research that we bring research into the classrooms, but classrooms also help us to get an ideas about the research, identifying knowledge gaps, and then bringing back into the research. That's how it works. And uh, these days, in last uh, decade or so, now the rankings both globally and nationally also has made universities to ponder on how they position themselves in the context of the research and therefore research capacity building remains uh, critical. But you cannot talk about research capacity building in isolation. What we need to look at is that how do we measure the research output of the universities? How do we actually enhance research output of the universities in that context? What motivates faculty to engage into research? But also looking at research systems and processes, research administration, engaging with the stakeholders and how actually we generate the knowledge. So research capacity building cannot be looked up and cannot be talked about in isolation. However, when I'm going to talk to you about research capacity building, please keep this context in the mind that we would be deliberating in the context that we, we just talked about. Public Health Foundation of India, where I'm working for the last 15 years or so, is a research-driven organization. In the context of public health, although we are involved in academics, but we do a lot of research in the context of programs and policies. And our experience has been when we deal with the donors and generally discuss with research ideas. Uh, one concern that is being talked about is that researchers in their mind feel that there are inadequate opportunities. We at PHFI feel that there are ample opportunities. There are enough opportunities that you want to do research, resources are available. On the other hand, when you talk to the donors, what they say is that there is limited research competence in the country. Like for example, recently we were talking about, and Dr. Ganga Khedekar would agree about disease modeling, that the capacity in the area of disease modeling in the country is very limited. There are very few institutions, there are few researchers who are able to have that competence of disease modeling for that matter. So similarly, there are several areas where we have limited capacity and that context, that's a perspective of the donors that they wanted to get something done. Then where is the capacity? I was talking to last week, somebody from a very senior uh, person from the pharma industry and they wanted uh, people with uh, the background in health economics. And he said that where are those people when we wanted to recruit them as health economists to do economic evaluation of clinical trials. The point I'm making is that there is some paradox of actually donor agencies saying that we have a limited capacity and researchers saying that where are the resources available. We'll have to see that how we match upon that.
But when we talk about research capacity, it is not only the methods, which is the hard code and critical of any, you know, advancing the research agenda, that we need capacity of conducting clinical trials, we need capacity of, you know, looking at systematic reviews and meta-analysis, or economic evaluation, or qualitative and quantitative research tools. But having talked about that we need capacity in research method, the hard code understanding of methodology, but we also need capacity of management and leadership in the context of research methods. Because, uh, for example, managing mega projects would require a lot of skills which are beyond methods also. We need capacity in terms of research communication, writing grants, writing publications, writing policy briefs, is also important capacity, so research communication is one of the areas that we need to look at. Thematic areas and field, like for example, if you wanted to do research in the area of neonatal health or tuberculosis or health promotion, the thematic area capacity building would be required because you cannot do a research in the area unless you have a broader understanding, a deeper understanding into a, that particular area. And then obviously, ethics, regulations, when you work in the institutions, like suppose you wanted to apply for the grants outside India, then the, the FCRA uh, it would be required. So the foreign currency regulation, understanding of nuances of all those issues are so important. Regulatory issues are also involved. Ethics issues are involved. So the capacity is not only from the methods point of view, but you need the capacity being developed in all these aspects which are critical and important advancing research agendas. Research strategy, as an institution, suppose you wanted to design a research strategy, then you would need a capacity in the area of how to develop a research capacity which also aligns with the national research priorities. And looking at what are the strengths that the institutions would have, grants and proposals writing, that, uh, and, uh, and it's not that we conduct only you know, workshops on grants writing, that uh, how do we build a capacity of researchers that they are able to independently build a capacity around writing grants and competing and not only in the national perspective but a global perspective and seek grants for conducting research. Manuscripts writing, good publications is an important area. Research methods and skills that I talked about and it's not only generally when we talk about research skills then we say that workshops and research methods. But we have to go beyond that to see that in each area, like understanding and doing systematic reviews and meta-analysis, or economic evaluation interventions, or using advanced techniques to do. Yesterday, uh, we were deliberating on use of secondary data for that matter. That huge amount of secondary data is available through a lot of uh, national surveys, like NHS or the census, or NSSO, that how do we build our capacity to use the secondary data available for the research purposes? That also needs the capacity. Of course, ethics and communication that talked about creating research leadership in the institutions where we will have to strategically invest in those areas, research mentorships, then policy briefs, then engaging into the mega projects, and niche areas like measurements and tools would be another area that where probably we will have to see that how we build into the capacity. But for that, we need... <coughs> How do we do that? That's a question that, you know, what is to be done is one thing, but then how do we do that? We need to create research culture in our institutions so that we provide systems and processes and research ecosystems where that can help us to build the research capacity in the institutions. Incentives for publications, publication fees, I was talking to Dr. Vidya and she very promptly said in the morning that uh, we provide a lot of opportunities to the, to, the, to the faculty members to come forward to publish in good journals for which the resources are being made available for the publication fees, uh, enrollment for uh, yeah. enrollment for uh, the, the programs are available for the research capacity building, and uh, the protected time. And uh, uh, Dr. Kanitka also mentioned about it that if we wanted to really promote the research culture, we will also have to provide protected time for the faculty to really engage into the research and allowing faculty to have positions in different universities globally. Collaborations, interactions are critical and important then research grants and seed grants, travel fellowships, creating linkage between academics and research is also important. Uh, uh, and then facilitatory mechanisms to how do you translate your research into the programs and policies, and of course providing freedom, autonomy, and independence remains critical in advancing the, the, the research agenda for the university. But in the context of interdisciplinary and transdisciplinary research, I wanted to say that uh, Science is sterile if it lacks the social relevance and purpose.
crumbled. And policies would crumble and cliff it if they are not firmly placed on the pedestal of valid science. Because research is merely a tool. What ultimately benefits to the society is the knowledge. And therefore, we have to move from knowledge generation to the knowledge translation. Because knowledge generation gives you the thrills of discovery. But knowledge translation gives you the satisfaction of the purpose being fulfilled. And therefore, investing strategically and consciously of that, how researchers move forward from taking knowledge generation to the knowledge translation is an important area of uh, you know, deliberation. Research to policy and policy to program is the iterative loop that we need to keep in always in mind. But finally, what can be done in the context of future directions is that, and again, Dr. Vita reminded today about this, that uh, our national word is peacock, and it's not the ostrich. If we really wanted to systematically, consciously, and strategically understand that how do we move from building the capacity of researchers amongst the country, among institutions, we will have to really see that where are the problems. Talk to them, understand what are the challenges and what are the barriers and what are the problems that they are facing into and then move that further forward. We may do it internally by SWOT analysis. We can do looking at some institutional strengthening mechanisms. We can also look at from external perspective like research advisory boards and some external people advising that how do we build on research capacity for the institutions and then develop your own strategic plan and then move forward further forward. So that's what actually I wanted to deliberate in 10 to 15 minutes on research capacity building in individual's point of view, but also from the institutional point of view, and how do we as a university take the research agenda further forward in that context. Thank you so much for this opportunity.